Good morning. Today we're going to be looking at how to make a C++ project again in the latest version of Xcode. We've done this before, but we want to make sure we keep working on this, making sure we can see how to have it set up. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. As you can see, we're going to do an Xcode project, so I already have Xcode open. And what we want to choose is we want to choose the option right here in the bottom middle where we're going to create a new Xcode project. So go ahead and click on that. And once we do that, we have a couple different selections up here at the top. We want to choose the Mac OS selection up here. And for the application type, we want to choose a command line tool. As we've been doing in the past, we want to make sure that our product name has no spaces so it can easily be added to our GitHub repo very effectively. And you want to again keep your product name something simple and easy that makes sure what you're actually doing. So we're going to keep this one, we'll just call it sample project. And for the organization name and identifier, those honestly are up to you. I'm going to keep mine always at CTEC just because it's where we're at and how we're going to get everything set up. And for language choice, you want to make sure you're using C++ because again, we're definitely not using Swift or Objective-C for this. And if you really want to do C, you can do that on your own. So we've got those basic settings all right there. Go ahead and again click the next option. And when we save it, we want to make sure we put it in a place where we easily have access to it. As you can see right here, I'm inside my afternoon C++ folder, which is inside my documents folder, which is inside my user directory. So that's where I'm going to keep everything in there. So I'll just go ahead and say right here. I can make a separate new folder for this, but this is the idea where I have all of my C++ projects in one nice, easy to find folder, and I can get to it easily. So right there, just go ahead and hit create then. Notice that I didn't choose the option for put a Git repo on there already because we're going to be doing that manually using GitHub and taking care of that as normal. So here we have right here a regular setup. We've got this ready to go. As you can see, we've got our information settings right here. This is where everything's going to be set up. And since I've now started the project, the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure we go ahead and bring that into GitHub. So again, I'm going to go over here to Finder so I can see what this is looking like. As you can see inside my Finder, here's my sample project right here. I have my uh, project structure right here and I have the main.cpp file that's built for that. So I'd go ahead and put that in and add that to GitHub. I'm going to drag that lovely sample project folder, drag it straight into GitHub. Gives me the warning saying it's not a repository, they want to create an add one, and so I just do that, create an add. As you can see, I've got a whole bunch of files. I want to trim that down a bit though. So I go up to my repository settings, and on here I go to my repository settings section, and in the ignored files, these are the, where I take the stuff out that I don't want to handle. So for my git ignore, uh, for my dot git ignore file or my ignored files, the things I don't want to look at, I have a bin slash, my dot ds underscore store, and my xc user data. Uh, the bin slash is mostly for my uh, Java development, but I keep it here just because it's easy to keep always typing it. The .ds stores that index file that we don't really need to have inside our project. And the XC user data, the Xcode user data that really has absolutely no business in our project at all for the repository purposes. So I go ahead and hit save. As you can see right here, that shrinks that down. My user data obviously has gone away, as well as any .ds store files that may or may not have been created when I was viewing the project in Finder. And just give it a quick little introduction for that. So created. C++ project, commit to master, and I hit publish, and that'll be right there up on my GitHub repository immediately. And I want to make sure I hit publish and sync repeatedly as I do that. Again, one of the nice things I can do is if I go up here under my lovely little edit section, I can add the automatically sync after committing, so I can automatically make sure that auto updates directly to GitHub repository online every single time I hit commit, so I can take care of that. We can add that as a nice lovely feature for that. We'll go ahead and leave that alone for right now. Okay, so we go ahead and we have that. It's now inside our GitHub repo. As you can see right here in my .git folder and my .git ignore file, that gives us um, information that was actually been added to our project and we have access to it. So let's go ahead and let's go back to Xcode and take a look at that. Go ahead and maximize the screen here. And so inside Xcode, we have over here on the left-hand side, we have our navigation window. Over here on the right, we have our properties information. And we can go ahead and close our lovely right panel, our utilities panel, because we're not going to be using that for C++ development like we usually did inside our Swift development environment. We can close that with the Alt Command Zero sequence right there. Or as you can see, right up here in the top right corner, there's a hide or show the utilities window. This way we have a lot of screen space available for us. Our navigator window we'll be using quite often. Looking over the navigator window, there's a couple things we want to make sure we see. We have our folder navigation structure. We'll be using this all the time. Uh, we have our issue navigator, aka we can find out where our problems are with our code. And then we have our breakpoint navigator and our debug. Those are the ones we'll be using most of the time for what we're doing with, but just as an FYI, that's where that is. By default, automatically opens to our properties. We don't have to worry about that very often, but we've got that right there. We have our basic main CPP. As you can see, we have our great, lovely Hello World that we don't like. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this up a bit. As you can see, by default, we have our vertical alignment of squiggles that we take care of like that. We have our std colon c out so, because it doesn't have a library import for it. And this is our just default main. And we won't be using this very often. In fact, we won't use this structure at all. So we can go ahead and simply just remove this file and get it out of the way. So let's go ahead and right click on it and choose delete. 
You want to remove reference to that? No, we want to actually move it to trash. We don't need that file at all. So go ahead and choose remove to trash. Oh, now I have a completely empty project. If I go over here to GitHub, we can see that that file, we've had some uncommitted changes. Main.cpp has been completely removed and that information is had. So let's go ahead and update that here. And so we remove main. So I put my message as that as when I remove my main as it's not used because I'm not going to be using that structure at all. And I'll go ahead and hit commit to master and get that ready to go. And that's obviously my couple commits on there moving on and go back into Xcode. So what we're going to do right here is we're going to continue on with our model view control relationship for our C++ dev. However, because we're doing the basics of C++ dev, we're not going to worry about a view at all. So we'll just basically be using a model and controller approach, but we'll set it in the same style we've been using throughout class. So to do so, I'm going to go ahead and right click on my project, right click over here, and I'm going to go to new file. And I want to make sure I add a new C++ file and hit next. And when I have this new C++ file, I'm going to call it the runner. And I'll call it um, sample runner because that makes sense because it's the runner for it. And I'm not going to be creating a header file for the runner because all the runner does, just like in Java, is runs this one piece of code. It's only there to get it started and then go on. So we'll hit next on that. And we're going to put this inside our sample project folder. As you can see, it's inside our uh, documents folder inside the afternoon C++, our, our regular workspace location. And then it's inside that second level directory. And to keep the idea of organizing our code so we have that right there, we're going to do a new folder in this. In that new folder, I'm going to call this the controller folder because it's like the controller package in Java. And we're going to keep the idea of organizing our code in chunks that make sense for what you're doing. And so keeping it with that it goes along with the controller approach for MVC. We'll put it right there, hit controller. And inside here, we hit create. So again, though, first we have the documents folder where everything ever, always is. Inside that, we have our workspace folder. Inside our workspace, we have our project, the code, and the specific module folder we're dealing with. Hit create and that takes care of it, puts it inside, we're ready to go, and we have our lovely .cpp file ready to go. Now, because we're going to be using our runner for this, we're going to go ahead and delete this lovely stdio.h because that's not what we're using when we create our default file. Again, we have our default comments right there, ready to go. What I am going to do is I'm going to start off with this, with using the idea of an int main. We don't have any parameters for most of the projects we're going to be sending, so I'm just going to leave a parameterless main on that. All it has is just ready to go. Because it's in it main, automatically our last line of code makes it so it's compilable. In this case, I write return zero for a standard close, meaning I'm closing with the appropriate response, aka zero. Now, because this runner right here is really boring, but I'm doing the MVC approach, this compiles and runs right now. I can do command B, showing this is a build successful. We've got a, a compilable thing. I can even run this, build succeeds. And all I'm going to get right here in my bottom corner is programming with exit code zero. It's got a proper run on that. It doesn't do anything, but it's got it running properly. And that's fantastic what we're doing right now. But we're going to do this with an MVC approach, and so we're going to start off with that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and close down this lovely window with Command-Shift-Y to close that out of the way. And I'm going to go back up in here and right-click on this. I'm going to go up and add a new file again. And in the new file, I'm going to add a C++ file. This is going to be the controller file for us. I'm going to hit Next. And this time, however, when I hit next, I'm going to name it, I'm going to give the name of my controller, and I'm going to leave the header file attached to this. So I'm going to call this my sample controller. So I'm going to leave the checkbox right there, hit next, and move on. It's going to go inside my controller uh, folder because it's also part of that controller package of information. So I have it obviously in my controller folder, my sample runner, and my sample controller that I'll be doing. And I go ahead and hit create right there. And one of the nice things about that is it automatically gives me my account include statement that I need to use for that right there inside it. As you can see, by using this uh, Xcode environment, it does it with an HPP. HPP and .h both work just the fine. <clears throat> both work the same. doesn't matter which one you prefer. I'm going to be using .hpp as my default, and that's where we'll go from there. But I'm going to go ahead and hit save just by default because it's a great thing to do. Now that I've got that, I've got these lovely files right here. We're going to go ahead and create a group to hold that as well. Remember inside Xcode that groups are merely designed to hold information. They don't actually affect the compilation environment. So I just select the code that I want to put inside that group. I'm going to right click on that and go ahead, new group from selection. And I'm going to call this the controller. And that's just a nice logical explanation. So when I look at this over here in my uh, navigator window, I have the fact that's the controller. My model would be in a separate group as well. And if I want to do any view based code, I could put that in a view as well. Now, once I go over to the .hpp, remember that's where the header information comes into play. And again, I'm not going to be using stdio.h inside this. I'm going to go ahead and take that out. That doesn't need to be used inside my structure for it. Look at uh, actually this, the preferences for that inside Xcode one of these days and take that out right there. What I do need to have right here is the idea that um, this is where I'm going to be defining the class that we're going to be using. And so when we're defining a class inside C++, it's a little bit different than what we've been doing inside Java. And so I'm going to take a look at that. Again, the keyword class, just like we saw with Java, happens. But I'm going to add the idea of the name of the class right here. 
It's already been specified right here inside that, so I'll just call it sample controller. And then a set of squiggles to go along. And notice right here at the end that it has a semicolon at the end of the line. So this is one of the things that's very different about C++ from Java, is that a class always ends with a semicolon right there to, for the class header definition. So it's a little bit different. You want to make sure that you always have that semicolon right there attached for it. Go ahead and hit save on that, making sure we have that. This is a great time to go over to GitHub Desktop. And as you can see, I've got those files added. So I created files for controller. And just a quick commit on that just to get that ready to go. And inside my controller, just like we can do inside Java, I'm going to have always a start method. And I like to start inside the actual class definition file, aka the .h file. This is where we define the class. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write my public section, because I know that's the first thing I have to deal with immediately. And so I type in public in a colon and press enter. As you can see, it indents it right there, so I can keep track of that. I'm going to have a void method called start. And what we have right here is a method prototype, just like a method header inside Java for an interface. It defines for the class that there is going to be a method called start that's part of the class sample controller and gets that information ready to go. And so at this point, for this first basic controller, this is done and ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this file alone and move back to my sample controller.cpp, the actual implementation file. Like we see right here, we have our pound include of sample controller.hpp. Notice that this is inside quotes right here. The quotes indicate that this is a in the um, the quotes indicate that this .hpp is written by us or by something we in imported from the project that's not part of C++'s direct library. So the quotes are something that we have. Now, what we've taken out of there is the idea of that um, pound, the pound includes standard io.h or those up there we're not using. That's because it's a library-based one. We are, however, going to add a import or include to this that belongs to the C++ library. And so we're going to do a pound include. And we're going to use the angle brackets because it belongs actually to C++. And we're going to pound include io stream. Now, for the pound include, this is what's called a preprocessor notification. This is not read by the compiler of C++, but rather it's read by the preprocessor, what gets everything ready for C++. In this case, it's saying, okay, go look for and find this location, sample control to HPP. And this is a path specific thing. So if you have, say, something that's in a different folder path, you'd have that path up here inside that. And we'll look at that in later projects as we go along. The same thing right here with the pound include in the angle brackets. That means you're going to use something that's built in directly into the language, and so it's just going to be using the idea of the name. So in this case, iostream. Notice also it does not have a .h because all the modern C++ libraries are included right there with that just simply by the name on that. You'll see some older videos or older notes like that where it has a .h in that, but with the new modern compiler, you don't have to. So next thing we want to do is we want to actually write that method that we were talking about inside our start method. So to do that, I'm going to um, go ahead and do a void and then we're going to name it the class to show who it belongs to. So it's going to be the sample controller. And then the scope resolution operator, aka two sets of a set of two colons. And then the name of the method, in this case, start, followed by, of course, by a parameter list and a set of squiggles. So we have right here the idea of pound include sample controller to HPP, which gives us a lovely green highlight right here to our code, saying this, co this represents that the sample controller object owns the start method that we've already linked right here inside our header file for it. So sample controller as a class has a void method in the public section called start. And so we've specified that, now we've defined it right here, and our method exists just fine. Then we want to be able to actually be able to do something with the screen on that, and that's where the IO stream is going to come into play. We're going to do a quick little output statement for this. And so we're going to use the idea of using, and then namespace, std, semicolon. And so the using namespace is very similar to what we saw in Java with the idea of the import where it's importing specifically that package of information, like say import java.util.arraylist. In this case, we're going to grab the information from the standard library, so we can use the stuff that belongs to it, so we don't have to prefix everything that's inside standard with the std colon colon, saying that it belongs to the standard library. This gives us access to the cout statements and the endl statements, so that means we can actually use to send input information to the console or um, to the, um, from the console if we need to. And so we'll just go ahead and add a line right here to represent that. So we have cout and then a set of angle brackets, and then a set of quotes, another set of angle brackets, and finally the word indel with a semicolon. And so what we can see right here is these lovely angle brackets right here direct the information from the side into the console output. So these in angle brackets show where the information is going from. So indel goes towards this, which this then goes into there, which goes into the console output. So all of this code right here, anything that's involved with it, will get dumped into the console. So those arrows indicate the directionality of that. And so we'll go ahead and say, hey, this is for console output. 
And so I added a little bit of text. This is for console output. Quick, lovely little thing. Now, because my runner right now, all it does is return zero, nothing's gonna happen. We're gonna use a little bit of a, uh, my runner doesn't do anything right now, but we're gonna use a reference to this lovely sample controller object. We're gonna make a pointer to it and use the selector operator so we can call it. And so what I'm gonna do is right here, and this menu is gonna be the same for all of our projects. I'm gonna make a reference to sample controller. And so I'm gonna type in sample controller and then name it app equals new sample controller. Now that looks like what we'd see inside Java, but as you can see right here, we have a lovely error message. This is not the way to write it in C++. The new operator only gets used when we're creating a reference to like a pointer. And so in order to do that, I'm gonna go right here in front of that, I'm gonna put an asterisk, and I'm making a new pointer of sample controller type. And oh, I still have a red exclamation point. Something's missing. I hover over this and we see that the sample controller is undefined unknown type. So what I have to do is I still have to go up here and I have to tell it again, even though it's in that same folder with all of that, I always have to use that pound include for the .h file. And so the pound include or hashtag include and then in quotes because I wrote the file and sample controller. So in my pound include and the pound include has sample controller.hpp because it's the reference to the actual header file for it. And right here I have an exclamation point because I haven't used it yet, but I have that lovely reference right there to that new pointer. And then I'm gonna go ahead and call the start method. App selector start. And so that gives it, so when I'm using a pointer, I can't simply just call the dot operator. I have to use the idea of either the selector operator, which is a little bit of a shortcut, or I have to dereference and then catch that option and then use the dot operator. But this is a quick little method to actually access it. So this is what we'll be using as our default main method for all of our projects in C++. So I've got that saved. I'm gonna go ahead and command B to um, build that. We have a successful build as you can see right here. So we'll go ahead and run that again. My build succeeds and this is for console output. I've actually gone from this, I've gone to my runner, I create my app, which means I go up, look inside sample controller.h, I check to make sure there's a start method. Oh, there is. Okay, then I then go to sample controller.cpp. I then go into sample controller.cpp. I find the definition of a sample controller. I then do that information when I call it in my runner, when I say app selector start. And that's what we're going for in this. So as you can see, we've made a quick little blurb on this of how to create a very basic app using C++ that's not quite Hello World. We've used the beginnings of our model view controller relationship on this. We're using a pointer right here as starting off with that when we make our runner. This will be our runner for all of our projects. It's going to look just like this throughout all of our code. And the last thing, of course, we should do, go to GitHub and created a working project. and hit commit to master, making sure we sync and publish as we go along. And so that's where we're going for that. We've got a quick little project. Everything is ready to go. That's gonna get a nice little start on how to use the new version of Xcode to create C++ code. Thanks and have a good day.